Hello and welcome. Please pause this video and try the problem on your own. Let's start by reading this problem. It says the table below represents the residuals for a line of best fit. So we've got this word here, residual, which is kind of intimidating. Uh, but let's just define that one out. Uh, a residual. What is that? Well, if you're trying to draw a line of best fit for a bunch of points, right? Let's say we have uh, a graph right here. X and Y, and we've got like these different points here. One, two, three, four points, I guess. And do four points, this one too. We try to draw a line of best fit, a line that's closest to the most points possible. So maybe here, something like this, right? Okay, so this is our line of best fit for these points, let's say I've drawn ac accurately. The residual is this vertical distance right here and here, right? These vertical distances from the point to the line itself, because there is a distance between the line and the point, so that distance is called the residual, right? Those are the residuals. And you can also say that residuals, sometimes you use E for that, equals, let's say, Y minus, let's put a Y with a hat on it, right? So um, that means that the residual E is specifically the, the um, excuse me, the, 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 the observed value, oh boy, y is the observed value, so this, this would be y here, this point, that's what actually happened, minus, right, the predicted value, which is the point on the, the line of best fit itself. So it's the difference between them. So you can imagine here that since there's a, the, the, the y value, the observed value is above the predicted value, the difference here would be positive, right, higher minus lower. However, in the next case, what's going to happen? Well, in the next case, the y with a hat on it, the predicted value is above the um, observed value. So here, uh, here we're going to get the reverse, right? We get a lower value, this, minus the, obs the, the observed value, minus the predicted value, it's going to be negative, right? So here, with a line of best fit, we know right away some points should be positive, some should be negative, right? Here, what are we going to get? A positive difference here, a negative difference here, a positive difference. And notice that all the residuals, right, here there's almost like this random like difference between the predicted, predicted values on the line of best fit um, and the observed values that are around it. So, so that means that if we were to plot these residuals, that's what this is, this is a plotting of these distances, these points here, um, we should get some kind of a random scattering. If we don't, our line of best fit is not a good fit. Um, let me try and represent that. So let's say we have another situation, right, x and y. So let's say we have these points here, similar points. If I draw my line of best fit below all of them, this does not be a very good line of best fit, but the idea is to see that, oh, we can tell our line of best fit is off because when we look at our residuals, they're all going to be positive, right? That's one way to look at it, positive or if they're all negative, or if they're not random in some way, if they're forming some other kind of pattern other than this positive-negative scattering, right? It doesn't have to be perfectly positive or negative or balanced. There's definitely an element of randomness to it, and that allows us to figure out, is our line of best fit actually making sense? So x is going to represent the independent variable, and the y's here are going to represent the actual distances. So here in our sample, x would be, let's say, 1 here and 2, 3, 4, four here, sorry, and five and six. Uh, so our residuals here would be one independent variable, comma, whatever this positive value is. The next one would be the point two, comma, this negative residual right here, and so forth. That's what we're plotting. That's what's going on this table. So if we plotted these out, let's see what happens. So two, two is the point here. Three, one is here. Three, negative one is here, because it's possible to have multiple points at one independent variable. We have no idea what this data is based on. 4, negative 2 is here. And then 6, negative 3 is here. 7, negative 2 is here. 8, negative 1. 9, 2. 9, 0. Oops. 9, 0. And 10, 3. Okay. So look, this is somewhat scattered, right? But do you see how, right, we can easily represent the pattern of what's happening here with this Let's say draw a different color curve, right? So here you can see that the pat there is a pattern to these points. They're not a random scattering, right? Therefore, 
we can say that the line of best fit is not a good fit for this graph. It's not, whatever our line of best fit is for this data, it's not a good fit because the points are not random enough, right? It's just some kind of random scattering. So you should see something like, let's just plot an example over here. Here's our X and Y axis. Um, we should see some kind of smattering of points above and below, maybe on, right, the axis right there. Some nice smattering of points um, to represent the line of best fit. Because if that happens, we know we've got a great line of best fit. 